Dr. Kawashima's brain training for Nintendo Switch has been on the market for just over a year now, if you can believe that. And you know, I've been playing the game almost every day since its release in Japan on December 27th, 2019. While Switch owners in Japan, Europe, and Australia have had access to the game on the eShop and at retail, most gamers in North America haven't had a chance to try out the game yet. While it's possible that the game could release any day now, you're probably wondering if it's worth it. Well, today I'm going to talk about five points you should consider when deciding whether or not to purchase this game. Danny from the Famicast here. If you're new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. Today, we're going to take a look at brain training on the Nintendo Switch, basically taking a look at some things that you might not realize about the game. Now, there are several training exercises that make use of the Joy-Con's IR camera. Now, these include finger calculations, finger drills, and this rock, paper, scissors thing that you can do. Now, the camera functionality works pretty fine, and you know, over the year I've been playing the game, I've never really had any problems with it. I will say, these do kind of feel like they were just tacked onto the game to show that it could be done, or, you know, maybe this is just some kind of proof of concept that Nintendo had ready during the Switch development. It's really hard to say, but you know, when it comes down to it, these are a bit underwhelming, and I usually find myself skipping them more often than not. Again, just to clarify here, the tech works fine, but it might be a relief to hear that these don't take center stage of this overall package. Brain Age on the Nintendo Switch offers a few modes to play with friends. Not only that, but this is one of the only modes in the game that you can play on TV. Now, as for the games, there's bird watching, flag raising, and box counting. Now, it can be kind of fun to take on your friends with these minigames, I guess, but nothing is really going to blow you away or keep you coming back. Bird watching and box counting rely on counting items on the screen and just seeing which player is closest to getting things right. Now, flag raising actually uses gyro uh, from the Joy-Con. Basically, you're trying to mimic what's happening on screen with this guy like kind of waving these flags around and you're doing that, uh, making motions with the Joy-Con in hand. Honestly, I haven't been able to talk any of my friends into playing this, so I just kind of played by myself to check all of these out. And, you know, kind of like the IR exercises, I was left a little bit underwhelmed here. And just to note here, too, that these modes, as far as I know, unless something is just unlocked and somehow hasn't been unlocked in the year I've been playing, these are not available in single player mode. Now, I, I know I've started out a little bit on the negative side here, so let's get into one thing that I actually think is pretty cool. Now, when Brain Age first released on the Switch, one of the key features of the game was listed as coming soon. Of course, this was the Brain Training Championship. Here, participants compete in four tests and have the results stacked up against other people from all over the world. Players have a full 24 hours over the weekend to join. Now, results become available every Monday at 4 p.m., at least they do here in Japan, and show where you are ranked around the world. Now, a few thousand people per week participate, and I always found it pretty fun to take part. Not only can you see where you place overall, but you can also see where you place in your age bracket as well. Overall, this mode is something I try to set aside time for every weekend. In an odd twist, the Switch Lite, which was released just months before Brain Age, is not easily compatible with the software. Now, most of the included exercises only require touches, taps, or writing. However, the ones that call for the use of the Joy-Con might prove a little bit problematic. Now, sure, if you have an extra set of Joy-Con on hand, you're probably gonna be able to get things working just fine. Just keep that in mind if you're actually going into the game and you only have a Switch Lite. This game was designed for the standard Switch hardware. While buying a game like Brain Age digitally might be the preference of many, those who pick up the game physically get a little bit of an extra here, a stylus. Now, while it's perfectly possible to play the game without it, you will definitely find yourself putting in more precise numbers and letters with the help of this included stylus. If you don't want to go physical, and if you don't have that Mario Maker 2 stylus, Nintendo does sell the accessory from the official stores in your region. Of course, no word about North America. As of the time of this recording, the game's not released there. But at any rate, please be sure to check that. It's basically the optimal way to play the game, or alternatively, you can try your luck with a third-party option. Now, there are a few other things included in this package that I kind of want to just put in here in this hodgepodge at the end. Um, I mean, similar to Devilish Brain Training on the 3DS, players can actually go through a working memory challenge, which is basically yet another way to see how you can remember things. You're basically remembering things, like in this case, uh, a, a number of different shapes, uh, basically like the one before or like two before or something like that, as you can see here in the footage. 
Now, a few other extras included here include unlocking the original Brain Age theme when you reach the Brain Age level of 20. Uh, it's just for that session. Uh, there's also an extra Dr. Mario-like puzzle game called Germ Buster. Uh, there are friend rankings, the ability to opt into this Brain Age daily result email, and you can even get this shiny gold star on the months that you've been trained every day of the month. So there's a lot of little things kind of hidden in here uh, for you to do on top of just the regular training. Spending a year with brain training on the Switch has actually been pretty enjoyable for me. Now, over that time, I can't really say for sure if my cognitive abilities have increased. Now, at the same time, I have noticed that my average scores and times for the exercises have definitely gone up. Now, while I think the series would see more success and a little bit more practicality on mobile, the Switch version provides a fun experience with minimal time commitment. The new IR camera additions are neat, but their addition really doesn't make it a must-buy. The same goes for the multiplayer and the IR stuff here too. Overall though, it's a pretty casual experience, and it's also a budget price game, at least in Japan and Europe and also Australia, so it might be worth your time. Keep that in mind before taking the plunge. As always, thanks for checking out this video. If you like what you see, please feel free to give us a like. If you're new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe. We've got tons of podcasts, video reviews, special videos like this, and a whole lot more. Again, this is Danny from the Famicast. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you later.